what we're going to look at here is some basic reflections and cover some of the common mistakes that people make when they're actually trying to put reflections in water. Right, now I want you to imagine you're sitting in a rowing boat on a stretch of water here and that you're looking fairly low down at the river bank and we're going to see how this selection of objects is reflected in the water and how you would see it in a picture. But before we do anything else, let's put a little bit of grass and a little bit of mud to create the river bank. What I'm now going to do is a reflection of the river bank itself. And the first thing to remember is that when you see reflections in water, they always darken lighter objects and they always lighten darker objects. In other words, the tonal contrast between light and dark is reduced. Now you can see here and there, I've just left a very tiny gap between the base of the bank and the reflection. That sort of gives that silvery line that you often see that helps to define the end of the water and the start of the bank. Right, I've put some paint on the objects. I've kept them fairly light, apart from this post here, which I've added a bit of extra shadow to, and you'll see why in a minute. Right, now the, the main thing to remember with reflections is that without exception, they always run vertically down from the item they're reflecting. So in this case, if it's completely still water, we'd put the reflection of this fence post in about the same height, that's about an inch long, so we'll do the fence post about the same. And there is a reflection. Now, if the water gets a little bit ruffled, and a few waves in it, then so does the reflection. But it's still vertical essentially, even though it twists and turns a little bit, it's maybe broken up a little bit here and there, it still follows this vertical line below the post. Now the next one we come to is one that confuses people at times because they're not quite sure whether that runs vertically as a reflection or even this way. Well the answer is quite simple, it actually runs the opposite way to which something is leaning. So in this case the reflection, and we'll assume it's gone back to still water again, the reflection in this case will simply run like that. Now I've put three little marks on the fence post here just to remind you if you're not sure about that. All you have to remember is that if that part of the fence post has to be vertically below to achieve the reflection, then vertically below is somewhere here. That mark there vertically below is somewhere there, and that mark there is there. Join those three marks up and then you have your fence post. With thin posts or, or thin branches of trees, and you want to capture a little more movement in the water than just a sort of a gentle sort of little bit of ripples, you can actually do a double ripple. By doing that little double ripple, it gives a little bit more agitation in the water. Now here's a couple of interesting examples of reflections. This one is where the fence post, and I'm, I'm imagining, is tipping forward over the bank and actually hanging over the water somewhat. So because it's tipping forward, and from the angle you're looking at the post, you're actually going to see it slightly foreshortened, slightly shorter in length than its real length. But of course, the reflection, because you're looking at it from a different angle, you'll see the full length of the reflection. Now, in the case of an item that's leaning backwards away from the river bank, then the opposite applies. As this is painted away from the river bank, you will see much less of the reflection like that, because the reflection then becomes much more foreshortened because there's so much less of it showing over the bank. Right, now if you're not sure how that works, let's try this little experiment with a mirror. Imagine for a moment that my finger is a fence post on the river bank, here. And I'm leaning my finger forwards now. You can see not a lot of my finger because it's foreshortened, but you can see the full length of the reflection. So, because it's hanging over the river bank, you can see a much longer reflection than you can actually finger, or fence post, whatever it might be. As I move my finger back and angle it back, you can see that the reflection almost disappears. As I've angled it back, it looks like it's straight, but I can assure you that my finger is angled back from the mirror at this point. You can see there, 
okay but you can see how little reflection is available now one other area that people get confused about is the relationship between shadows and reflections which direction does one go and the other one go now let's imagine that the sun is coming from this direction here the shadow would fall on the river bank in exactly the same way as it would do if it was 20 yards further in from the river and the shadow would be cast like that so if you get confused between shadows and reflections just treat them differently remember reflections are always vertically below the item that's being reflected shadows will vary according to the position of the sun Incidentally, if you have a very low sun, early morning or late afternoon, so the shadows are much longer, then the shadow will very often carry over the riverbank and fall onto the water. Just treat that exactly as if this was solid ground, except if the water is slightly rippled, then you'd need to ripple the shadow very, very slightly. But you still have the reflection coming down vertically as ever that's not altered by the position of the Sun right now I'm often asked where does a reflection start on an item such as a tree a mountain in this case a church which is some distance away from the riverbank but you'll be able to see it in the reflection in the water very often people assume that because this is sitting on a hill here that the representation you have of the hill here that the whole of the church will be repeated upside down in full in practice what happens is that the reflection you have to imagine starts where the base of the church hits the ground which is about here now if we measure the height of this building for example which from the top of the roof to the point where it hits the ground is just about half an inch if we start the reflection at that point you can see that the building isn't even going to be seen in the water at all it's going to be hidden by your viewpoint of this reflected hillside if we do the same for the church uh, steeple that's about one two about two and a quarter inches so if we take two and a quarter inches to about there all that you're actually going to see in the reflected part of the water is about that much of the church tower so we'll fill that in and you can see it's not very much at all because two reasons one the church is some distance away from the water and two it's partially hidden behind that hillside oh just to finish on an encouraging theme have you noticed that we haven't put a single drop of water where the water is all that we've done to create the water is to actually produce a number of reflections and then rely on the eye of the viewer to tell themselves that this must be water. Have a little practice and enjoy it and surprise yourself how easy it is to produce a very believable watery scene.